What's up, guys? War here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are in Act 3 Cruel. We just got here, and for the longest time I was playing uh, Firewall with Spark, which is a very good build. Check out the leveling build. It might pop up on the screen. Uh, check that out. That'll take you all the way through the very first acts until you get to Cruel. But once you get to Cruel, you're going to switch over, and you're going to be playing Meteor, okay? Ice Meteor. Um, this is a very strong build. Um there's a few other people that have uh, have kind of made this, and I and I kind of took their ideas and changed it a little bit. So shout out to Rax, and then shout out to the original creator, which is uh, I want to make sure I get his name right. Zen, big shout out to those guys. These this build is absolutely amazing, and it's a little bit different because I am playing Chronomancer and I'm not playing Stormweaver. So this is going to be a big a big difference here. Uh, my ascendancies on here are Apex, where they get slowed, and then quickened sand hourglass for more cast speed so neither one of these nodes really super duper help with uh this build however this is probably the strongest build swap over um in going into cruel and possibly the end game until i can get my last nodes on here which are going to be time snap as well as now and again so that way we can just insta spam a bunch of uh cooldown spells so this build is very, very good, and a big reason to switch into this if you are playing Sorceress, whether you're playing Stormweaver or Chronomancer, is because Freeze in this game is insane. Freeze is by far probably the strongest element out of the three, at least up to now. Um, once I get into Endgame and I can kind of test some other things, I'll make another video for you guys so that way you guys can see, but this is absolutely busted. So let me go over and kind of break down... Um, what we're doing here and kind of explain a couple things. Um, let me go over the passive tree first. So uh, if you guys followed my guide from the firewall with spark um, up to act three and finishing the campaign, at least the first part, the tree is going to follow pretty much the same thing, but you're going to make some changes. Okay. Um, now you're going to come up this way. You're going to come up the same way, but we're going to move off of path of storms and we're, then we're going to go into path of winter for more cold and freeze freeze buildup. Um, we are going to swap off of Breath of Lightning into Breath of Ice for more cold, cold pen. Although you may not need this, but I do like this uh, into cold pen. We are going to be dropping Sudden Escalation and all the crit stuff off of the Lightning. Um, we will be keeping Stormbreaker here. Um, and we're going to take Overexposure, which is great. Um, now, into the new additions, because what we did do is beeline it all the way up in here to, into Pure Power. We're going to take all the nodes out of that from the last video. Um, and then we're going to be doing Glassation and then Endless Blizzard for plus one to all cold skills, as well as Inescapable Cold for even more freeze buildup. We're going to be taking the nodes into here, which is pretty sweet. Again, guys, build links will be down in the description below. Shout out to Mobilytics. Um, so that's kind of where we left off at Act 3, but now we got a bunch more nodes to add. So we are going to be coming over here and adding up into Climate Change which is going to add more freeze buildup, which is great. We need this. We want to freeze as fast as possible so we can auto cast meteors. Um, next, we're going to be up here at the top. We're just going to go over and take some more nodes here, and we're going to grab Ether Flow for even more mana regen. I will tell you this with this build, auto casting meteors is very expensive on your mana. It is going to drain your mana very, very quickly. If you're playing Stormweaver, you'll be a little bit better than me and what I have at Chronomancer because of your passive skills, um, your ascendancy nodes. But... Uh, we did figure out a way to basically not worry about mana. So take ether flow. This is going to give more mana regeneration. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to go all the way up into, um, the efficiency here, the evocated efficiency, which is going to help require, uh, recover 3% of mana when you invoke a spell. So when we cast our meteors, we'll get some of that back. It won't be as bad. Um, I did take one into metal skills, gain 8% increased energy. I'll explain that in just a second. Then we'll come down and we're going to grab Thin Ice for more buildup as well as Heavy Frost for more buildup. Super strong. After that, I'm coming down here and I come down and I kind of gain, uh, I go this way and I go into Insightfulness for increased maximum energy shield as well as mana regeneration. Uh, and then we also grab Melding. We're going to lose 10% reduced mana, maximum mana, but we gain 40% more energy shield. If you do not want to do that, you're fine. Um, I think if I take this off, I go back up to almost 1,000 mana, but either way, I'm super good. Uh, then we come down to Dampening Shield for increased maximum energy shield and threshold, which is great. So this is kind of where we're at right now. Uh, we will be taking more nodes. I'll probably take some more uh, attack speed here, or I'll come in and grab some uh, Eldritch Battery potentially. 
but there's some more mana regeneration nodes here if you guys are struggling with that. Um, but right now, this is where kind of where we're at. I almost want to come over here to Shattering and grab more Freeze buildup. But right now, we freeze pretty fast. So, uh, yeah, this is kind of where we're at for now until we can kind of, you know, gain some more levels and points. But it's pretty solid for what we're doing. I, I Once I got into Cruel, I have not had a single issue with this build. And it's been great. We're just basically throwing Frost Bombs and getting Frost Walls and dropping frost bonds and we're getting free cast of blizzards i'm gonna go fight some monsters and you'll see it in a second but let's go over everything so our skills before we are on flame uh, flame wall arc frost bomb we're keeping frost bomb and we're ditching everything else so we're going to be doing frost bolt here okay frost bolt is going to be one of our main ways to gain um chill and just apply that exposure not exposure but we're gonna we're gonna throw these gonna help apply chill and it's gonna put this chill ground here which is just going to help us increase that freeze build up frost bolt is not your main source of damage in this build it is all comet okay comet is at 5500 dps right now it's insane okay it's insane i'm in act three i'm level 59 it's incredibly powerful okay um so our supportive nodes that we're going to put on here is scatter shot which gives us three frost bolts instead of one we got Glassation, so that way we increase even more Freeze buildup to help do that. And then we got Arcane Tempo. The third one, guys, you can put pretty much whatever you want on here. Um, I just like this so I can cast them faster to get them out there. Um, it's not a big deal. Frostbolt does not cost a whole lot. It's 41 mana. We regen so fast, it doesn't matter. Like, you can see that I'm just casting. You can see my mana down there just, like, maybe I start to lose, but I regen so fast, it's not that big of a deal. Um, before I get into the cast on freeze, I'll talk about frost wall here. Frost wall is great. Um, we just drop frost wall down. It creates a big thing. I will tell you that frost wall, when it explodes, freezes enemies pretty much instantly. And it allows us to cast our, um, comets for free. It makes things super easy. Um, and it, it's really good for just farming or blocking off mobs, anything that you want to do. Our support gems in here is icicles. So icicles have 50% life life, which means that when we cast these, these frost walls have 50% life, which we want them to explode faster. It just makes it easier so we can freeze enemies. Uh, next, we got ingenuity. This has a 30% um, cooldown recovery rate because when you cast this, there is a cooldown. I have three charges, but it does have a cooldown. Next, we got spell cascade. That's where we have more of these. Um, we get more frost walls as opposed to just one. I like it. It's a bigger area. I think it works a little bit better. Next, we got frost bomb here. Frost bomb we just throw down. This is going to cause a big explosion. We're going to deal some really good damage, and it's going to help freeze some enemies. Uh, we got magnified effect, which is 40% more area of effect. We're doing strip away, um, which gives uh, the exposure applied, has 30% increased effect. And then we're doing fast forward, which means that instead of this taking about five, almost six seconds to cast, it's three. So if I throw this on here, you'll see that this just freezes the sky. And then I cast a comment for free and he dies. So that's kind of like our build. Um, I have one curse and one mark. We're doing hypothermia, which is going to give us 35% negative cold res to the monster. I mainly use hypothermia for bosses. Um, we got some more monsters coming. Three more. Look at these guys. Freeze. And then they die. Uh, we got Heightened Curse to increase the uh, effectiveness of our curse. We're doing Persistence to make this last longer, which is great, because it only lasts, lasts 7 seconds, so it lasts a little bit longer, which is great. It's like 10. Uh, next, we got Freezing Mark. This one is like an instant cast. I really like this one. Uh, freezing Mark is one mark per target, but we do 30% more freeze buildup. So I like against elites or bosses, this is really, really good for us. Um, we have Frost Nexus, so it creates a uh, chilled ground after we kill that monster, which is awesome. And then we got Expanse for 50% uh, percent more area of effect. It does give us a cooldown, which is fine. It's not a big deal because we're only casting this on like elites or bosses, so it's not a big deal. Um, next, I have Comet. So I also have a manually cast Comet. The reason that we have this is so... One thing that's kind of difficult with this build in a sense is because... If you kill a bunch of ads and you lose all the freezing and you have an elite or boss, you know, you only cast the comments for free if you freeze the target. So on bosses or elites, if we can't freeze them effectively, then we don't cast them for free, which is our DPS. So I'd rather just have an extra 
way to cast Comet for free, and we still can do some insane damage. <clears throat> Lastly, I'm doing Ice Nova. If you guys like Ice Nova, this is just like if monsters roll up on you and block you, you can just spam this, and it makes it fine. It does some additional damage, and it knocks enemies back, which is great. Then you can roll out of the way. Um, now, into the last thing, and probably the most difficult part of this build, because there's a lot of math that goes into this. Um, let me freeze these guys so they just die. Get out of here. Um, is cast on freeze. So cast on freeze is a meta gem. You do not get this until uh, late into Act 3, and you need at least 60 spirit to cast it. Okay, so it costs 60 spirit, so that way it's there. The reservation is there. It acts as like how we would re reserve auras from PoE 1. So we need 60 spirit. You don't get your additional 30 spirit until Act 3 in the campaign. But once you do that and you can get cast on freeze, I definitely suggest that you guys go get it. And then that's when you would transition over from Firewall and uh, Spark into this build. As soon as you can get it, then that's when you would transition over. So cast on freeze is an aura. Oh, let me fight these guys. You can see we just freeze everything. And then like on this elite, we can do the mark and we'll freeze him again. And then he dies. So let me back up. So cast on freeze is the meta gem. And then we throw comet in there, of course, because that's the spell that we're going to cast for free. Then we have spell echo, which gives me more comets. Before, you're only going to get a couple, but we double this, and then we get a bigger area of effect, which is nice. Or it's not doubled. We get to cast more of them for free, and it's a bigger area of effect, which is kind of nice. Lastly, impetus. Okay, this is where we have the energy aspect of casting, uh, using Meteor to cast on free. So let's go over this. So we have... Cast on freeze says gain 100 energy when you freeze an enemy with a hit from a skill. So whenever we freeze, we gain 100 energy. Okay. And that's where this little marker up here is, is our cast on freeze, this percent. Whenever we freeze something, this will fill up. If it gets to 100%, we cast it for free. So if we open up our cast on free here, energy gained on freeze is 100. Our maximum energy is 166. So we gain 66% from modifiers. 40% of that is from impetus, okay? Now, to cast Comet, we need, there's some serious math here, but to not confuse you, you have 10, uh, at the bottom here it says 10 maximum energy per 0.12 seconds of base cast time of socket of spells. Now, Comet is an additional one second to cast. So the cast time is one second, but the skill gives us another, so it's two. So basically what you're going to do is multiply 0.112 to two. You're going to multiply that by two, and that's going to be how much your total maximum energy is that you need to cast a meteor every single time on freeze. I think it's 156. So once you get to 156 energy, every single time you freeze somebody, you will cast a meteor. Okay, and that's where impetus comes in because if you do not have impetus, you do not have enough energy to cast every time. It'll be every other time we freeze an enemy, you'll get a meteor. We do not want that. We want 100% meteors every single time we freeze. So with these, with impetus, 60 uh, energy, and then into this tree all the way up here, if you take just this one node, you will have enough exactly or just over so that way, every single time you freeze, you will get a meteor. So that's how that works, guys. Um, I'll go over gear really quickly, but it's pretty simple, at least for now until you get to the end game. All your gear paces, except for your weapon, need to be just catered to max life, resistances, that's it. Maybe maximum mana if you're having issues there. Or if you have cool stuff that gives you like life regen or you know increased critical chance for spells, anything like that is cool. But the main like mods that you need to have is on your weapon. This can be a staff. It doesn't have to be a wand. You want spell damage, maximum mana, plus two to cold level of all spells, and increase freeze buildup. Very, very important. You have to have the increase uh, freeze buildup. It just helps make this build feel even smoother. Okay? 
So that's pretty much all you're going to do. Now let's just showcase the build really quick. This build is phenomenal against bosses, especially ads and just farming, map clearing. So I just throw this down. This will freeze and kill everything. We can throw up a frost wall. And we're just going to blast. Here goes a, a, a blue guy. We'll mark him. Right. And then as long, boom, dead. Look at that. A unique. Because that's how we uh, turned on streamer mode and got it for the uh, for the video. Really nice uh, mythic there. And all you're gonna do is run around. You're just gonna throw. You're just gonna throw frost bombs. You can curse if you want. You can AOE guys. And you just run around. They freeze. Ooh, see, we got a unique. This is a perfect showcase here. So he's frozen. Okay. Now every single time we freeze, we get our meteors. Knock these guys back. And boom, they just die. It's super, super fun. This build is fantastic. I've been having a blast with it ever since I switched. It has not been an issue at all. The freezing in this game just makes playing any part of it super, super easy. Look at that. Freeze and they just die. Now, a couple things to know here if you guys want to swap and do different things. Um, I will show you something really quick if we come in here. So the, the pers uh, where is it? Uh, not persistence. Um, no, where is it? I had it on, I had it on a skill somewhere. Oh, I'm getting trapped. No. Frost bomb. Um, you guys can put in, let me go to town real quick. Uh, if I can not be attacked here. Let's go to town really quick. I want to show you a quick change here. So in skills, if you guys are really struggling with mana, you can come over to inspiration, okay? It is going to require strength, so you're going to have to get your strength up on the, on the skill on your passive tree. But you can put inspiration in if you want inside your cast on freeze. You, will, you can lose uh, spell echo and just do cast on uh, or inspiration to reduce the cost. So meteor itself costs... Uh, 50 or excuse me um, 120 this drops it to 64 when you have this on so 64 comets that cast for free is pretty good now you don't get the bigger area of effect and you don't get more of them but if you are struggling for mana then you could do inspiration that is one big change that I would suggest for people who are struggling that way but yeah guys this is the build it is fantastic. I'm playing this all the way to maps. I just got into Act 3 of the campaign on Cruel. And, yeah, it's been super fun. Freezing in this game is overpowered. I would definitely suggest playing it until they either nerf it or, like, you get to end game and you're going to swap your stuff out, guys. So, like the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Comment down below. That really helps out with the, uh, the algorithm. Liking and comment. Ask any questions you guys have about it. I'll be happy to answer. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. And as always, stay gaming. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.